Welcome to God's Playbook with your host, Father Rico Passero. It's a 20, 10, 5, touchdown! Touchdown! Let's play ball. Friends, welcome back to God's Playbook. Today, the church gives us the beautiful imagery of Jesus calling himself the light of the world. Back in 2002 for the World Youth Day, St. John Paul II chose the theme, you are the salt of the earth, you are the light of the world. And the beautiful theme to the World Youth Day in Toronto, it's called the light of the world. And that's the song that you're hearing in the background on this podcast. This beautiful song was created for this World Youth Day to remind us of sacred scripture and how important it is to recognize Jesus as the light of the world. From the time of our baptism, and when we take on the name Christian, which means anointed one, we celebrate that Jesus is the light of the world. And so the Easter, the Paschal candle is lit. And our baptism candle, which is first given to our godparents, signifies that we are to walk as children of the light. So where does this imagery come from? Well, it comes from Jesus himself in this passage from John's Gospel. Jesus calls himself the light of the world, and it is he who is to spell the darkness of sin and death, of confusion, of despair. Jesus is our light. Jesus is our hope. And we need to also bring that light of Christ to others as well. That's our baptismal mission, to not only live holiness, but to be holiness. So how can we bring the light of Christ to others? When I'm at work and others come to talk to me, am I a Debbie Downer? Am I that person who's always negative? Oh, it's cloudy today. Oh, my hockey team didn't win last night. Oh, it's only Tuesday. How am I going to get to the weekend? This doesn't signify somebody who's exhibiting the light of Christ. Someone's going through a tough time. Oh, don't talk to Sharon. She's on edge right now. I heard the rumor that she's got issues at home. Oh, I'm not getting involved, right? I got enough problems to deal with. Once again, an example of somebody who's not living the light of Christ, as opposed to seeking Sharon out. Hey, Sharon, I can just see on your face that you're going through a tough time. I just want you to know that I'm here for you and I'm praying for you. And if you ever need to talk, I'm here. By the way, I think you're awesome because X, Y, Z, right? There, these are just some ways in which we can exhibit the light of Christ. Even if it's just for a moment, that spark, that little flickering candle in the corner of the room dispels darkness even for that little corner, doesn't it? So Jesus is asking us to model ourselves after him, who is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus, who is our hope. Jesus who lifts our spirits, who brings us peace and comfort, who gives us hope for a better tomorrow, a bright future ahead, and of course, eternity at last. And yet, right here on this Easter day, we're called to bask in the light of Christ. So first, we have to experience that light too. So in our own prayer lives, how can we ask that Jesus be more of a light in our hearts, to illuminate our hearts, our minds, our souls, so that we cannot focus on the negative things in the world, but focus on the positive ones. The glass should always be half full for us. We should always focus on the positives, not ignoring the negatives, but not dwelling on them. Because as he says so often in the scripture, by worrying, it doesn't bring an extra moment or day to your lives. Rather, it takes it away. When we focus on the light, then the darkness isn't as scary. We're not paralyzed by fear. Rather, we are inspired to go on, to take risks and chances, to celebrate the wins rather than focusing on the losses. Yeah, yesterday we could have done things differently, sure. Missed opportunities, sure. Failures, okay. 
But when we walk as disciples of the light of Christ, it's always about the chance of today, the gift of today, a brighter tomorrow, a chance to start anew, clean slate, fresh start. That's where we find ourselves, both spiritually, personally, psychologically, physically. How can we start anew? Even a candle dispels the darkness of a room and brings hope and some vision for the one holding it or the people around it. So too, we are called to be that candle, that we are to find our strength first in the Lord as we are fed by his word and sacrament, and then to go out and be that light for others so that they experience God shining through us. Are we willing? Are we able? Are we open to not only receive the light of Christ, but then to exhibit the light of Christ and to pass it on? So today, let's spend some time, friends, first of all, thanking God for being the light of the world for us, but then also thinking of ways in which through prayer and careful reflection, how each one of us can be the light of Christ for others and allow ourselves to be more open to the Holy Spirit moving in our life so that we, like those first apostles, can bring the light of Christ to anyone God puts on our path. Lord, we thank you for being the light of the world. We thank you of so many people who have brought your light to us in our lives. May we too be willing to be instruments of your light, to draw others closer to you, and to dispel whatever darkness surrounds us with the light of hope, of faith, and of love that only you can bring. Lord, make us instruments of your light as we continue this Easter journey today. For God's Playbook Friends, I'm Father Rico. God loves you, and so do I. If you like what you hear, please consider supporting us using any of our affiliate links in the description below via Budsprout, Ko-Fi, or GoFundMe. Thanks, and God bless.